got to go up to his job with a good old ham sandwich. Yeah. Shift the atmosphere. I'm shifting the atmosphere for my man. I don't know what y'all doing in y'all's house. No, you can't bring him nothing. I got him. Oh, no, you're going to be wives up in here. These men coming in here. The devil is a liar. You are. just being tormented I find the spirit of torment I'm coming husband I find the spirit of torment COVID I got a lot of y'all just tormented so now that your spirit is open to receive now that your spirit is open to receive bring the apostle of this house I bring the apostle of this house come on here I bring the apostle of this house your spirit is up in the receipt but that's said the Lord apostle Fred be good the third go ahead and feed him baby Hallelujah. The Bible says that marriage is honorable. And as my wife was ministering, I could hear the question from some men. How do I know that I found a wife? And you know because she she will not she just won't bring you honor. She'll give you honor. Hold it. Anybody can't do that. Two people can bring you a plate, but there'll be something different about the one that God has called. And I need to say this to somebody that's getting ready to miss the one that God called for them. In her presence, you'll get life. But what some of you are looking for is perfection. And perfection doesn't come until the process of marriage starts. Then the two will become one. But at this point, you look for the honor first. And after the honor, then you enter in. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. That's not the word. I just heard a question. Come on, clap your hands and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Bless his holy name. Grab your Bibles. I want to thank God for my wife, my rib, my love, Apostle Jamila Gooden. Come on, clap your hands for her. 
Thank you, baby. She makes it easy for me. Easy, easy. I hope y'all catching. I hope y'all, I hope y'all are catching the lessons. I hope you're catching it. Ask your neighbor, are you catching it? Are you catching it? Ezekiel 36. I want to give honor to our spiritual parents. Bishop and Mother Carswell. Come on, clap your hands for them. Thank you, Bishop, for holding the house down. He came and blessed us with blessed us with a mighty word, held us up while we were, and you heard my wife's testimony while we were going to see about our son. And we thank God that his hand, the hand of God, was there when we got there. Somebody should have been shouting. You should have been shouting a little louder than that. Because the hand of God, your son ain't going to see prison. Because the hand of God, your daughter won't be pregnant early. Because of the hand of God, your daughter going to become what she's supposed to become. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. It is truth be told. Ezekiel 36, do you got it? And 26 one scripture a new heart also will i give you and a new spirit will i put within you and i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and i will give you a heart of flesh father we thank you right now for what you have done and will do in jesus name amen you may be seated i want to minister from Subject title, Can You Be Loved? Can, it's a question. To you that was rejected, can you be loved? To you that have been church hurt, can you be loved? To you that have been divorced, can you be loved? See, as a church, UCC, CCM International, we're getting ready to build a greater work. Clap your hands in here. And the work is not getting ready to be built because it's a good idea for me and my wife. What you see with us is a completion of time. Something that God had already put together and commissioned before we knew it. So it is his commission that now he says, I want you to build a greater work for what I'm getting ready to do in the body of Christ. But this is the thing. Anytime promotion comes, pain comes. Anytime that God presents something, what he comes to test first is to see if his heart actually exists in you. I found that in parts of my life, Bishop, that I had more word than love. I know some of y'all ain't going to be impressed. There was time where we had more of God's statues and his judgments and his clothes. And we had the things that looked like God, but we didn't have his, his love. So that the person of Jesus Christ was not presented, but it was the statue of men that were presented. And I was taught first the statue of men before I was given the ability to be able to love. Y'all gonna act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. We learn the do's and the don'ts before we learn the God. And some people have lived in the do's and don'ts and the problem with you living in the do's and don'ts is you subject everybody around you to the do's and don'ts. <laughs> 
one thing that I'm certain about when it comes to Unity Church, this church, this church in Charlotte that God has called is that God is going to build strong families, strong marriages. He's going to build a strong community through it. He's going to build a great work through it. This is the challenge. We can't do this by ourselves. <laughs> no matter how anointed that we are, no matter how pro pro prophetically profound my wife is, we can't do it by ourselves. So the challenge is is your heart ready to receive? the new level to take us into our greater word. Because there are some things that have to fall off of you and it can't, you can't wait till we get to the destination for it to fall off. It has to fall off now. It has to go now. Corporately and individually, we have to be ready because God is giving us a new heart. Why? Because he has found us physically and spiritually sound for him to be able to impart. But there's some things in us that has to go so that God can do his mandate not only through me and my wife, but through every man and woman that is attached here in Charlotte and internationally and abroad. Why? Because this is a body work, not a man work. And some of you right now are not healed because you're more about you than you are about God. You might not admit it, but you're more about the statue than the life. I need to ask you, if the God in you is so big, why aren't people following you? I'm ready for the challenge because I was religious first. So you can't challenge me with doctrine and theologies and liturgies because you'll be running into the wrong man. You can't challenge me with successions and bishoprics because you'll be running into the wrong man. It is love that establishes the kingdom of God. And God is saying to somebody, can you be loved? Because Trey, the generation that you're in right now, they're not impressed. Stand up, son. I want you to see him. They're not impressed by our word anymore, are they? That generation ain't going to care about how much word you got. They're not going to care about your liturgy and your dress, your phylacteries, your garments. They're not going to care. They'll stand out of respect, but they're waiting on the love because it'll be the love that transforms the body of Christ. Thank you, son. I'm excited, Bishop, about him transfiguring our heart because the heart magnifies a person's true intention so there's some people that came in here to weigh us today I just want you to know my weight on there's some people that came in here because they're hurting and they're trying to find a way you are the one that this word is for today. The heart magnifies a person's true intention for it is through action 
or the lack of action that we must magnify or shows the magnitude of a person's heart. Having a heart isn't just their ability to love, but to be loved. Because the fact of the matter is, some of you, you know how to love, but you don't know how to accept it. Let me walk into that. Relationships in life can make us hard and brittle because of what we suffer through them. They can make us destitute like a desert. It may sound far-fetched to some of you, but this is the heart of some of you. You know how to love. Religion will, will allow you to love but not be loved. It'll allow you to serve without really knowing the God because you will be in love with more of the, of the rule and the, and the somewhat relationship. So when real love presents itself, you'll look at it strange because you really have a relationship with God where you get beat across the back like the, like, like, like the, like the uh, 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 what, what, what were they? Like the priests used to do in the Catholic church in the days of old. They would flog, thank you baby, they would flog themselves. You're used to a painful relationship, but there is love that comes to rescue. So today, I formed some questions to challenge us to see where we are. Because most of us are in here, we'll, they'll say that that's not me. I can be loved. We'll see. We'll see. Because the fact of the matter is there are some people in full delusion thinking that they're in a fruitful place. But they're not. It's something about what, what God says that he that abideth in the vine. He say he purgeth it that it may produce more fruit. And some of you it's not breaking because God can't purge you to produce more fruit. He's saying, you won't allow me to purge you so you can produce your next level and be fruitful like I am calling you to be. When I looked at this, I thought about one of my favorite reggae artists is Bob Marley. So that's the title came from. The name of the song is, Could You Be Loved? He was simply asking a question. He says, now, if you can be loved, then don't make excuses about why you can't. Because now, a lot of people are not entering into some relationships because you've made excuses for why it won't work. And the problem really is, is you don't have the ability. You know how to love somewhat, but you don't know how to be loved. Are you a person, let me ask the question, are you a person that's lovable? Because some people can be mean-spirited. And the mean spirit comes from people that were around them and things that happened to them. So when God begins to bring them in the company of people that actually want to love them, that spirit rises up. Why? Because distrust is there. Because they're not able to be loved. Are you a person that's lovable? What does your demeanor speak to people that are familiar to you? What do people get when you come in the midst of them? There's some people like Mother, Re Mother Rebecca that when she comes in the midst of us, Mother Roberta, when she comes in the midst of us, you feel the heaviness of... You can like, you know, you like... Then there's some people that come in the midst of you and be like. What does your demeanor speak? 
what do people get when you come in the room? I'm not trying to impress you. I'm trying to question you because if you can define what I'm saying, then you're ready for the next level because even if it doesn't feel right, you can get it right today. Sometimes I wonder why people don't, sometimes we wonder why people don't gravitate towards us. We get on Facebook and get mad because we'll try something and nobody is gravitating. And you have to be broken. You have to be lovable. Come on, somebody talk to me in here. What do you really look like? I know what you think you look like, but you ought to ask somebody if you're brave enough, if you're brave enough. If you're brave enough now, you got to be brave because everybody is not wet. They're not really ready for the truth. I really don't feel love when you're around. As a matter of fact, it feels more loving to me when other people are around, but when we're by ourselves, I really don't feel. See, no matter what happens, I don't care what we as a couple personify to the world. The love that's not seen has always got to be heavier than that which is. And some of you, you're loving on the outside. But you're hateful and hurting in the inside. You're loving on the outside when people are around, when a company are around. I, I need to say this. This is not our segment of the message. Don't love me and honor me in front of people and treat me like crap when we get by ourselves. Don't bring me a plate in front of people but when we get by ourselves, I can't get an ice cream cone. If you do it for the company of people that never would care about you anyway, you'll never. You can never be who God wants you to be. Is your outward appearance inviting? Some of you are looking for love. You're looking for love, but baby, your outward appearance doesn't say you want to be loved. Your outward appearance says you want to fight. And don't nobody want to get into a fight on day one. Everybody don't know how to put makeup on. Some people put makeup on and it look like wall paint. Look like you got a knife tucked away or a gun tucked away. You can't, if you want to be loved, you got to present yourself like you want to be. I'm going to turn my back and say this prophetically. Treat that man right when he's home by himself. One thing about a man, a wise man, let me say this. He ain't going to leave nothing that's good. Y'all men better clap y'all hands like y'all know Jesus in here. Treat 
Trey say, I know that's right. These things that have happened to us broke our hearts. Some of us, when our heart was broken, we were broken. And we were broken to the point that when people were trying to love us, we pushed them away because we felt more in control in creating our own heart protection. Because we're asking God and we're saying, Lord, we want this and Lord, we want that. We want that relationship. We want to do this. And, and actually, you have not brought your walls down yet. Because when you were hurt the first time, you created a protection and a wall to keep people out. Because you really don't want people to get close because you were hurt so bad. Y'all gonna talk to me in here. There were people that were hurt so bad. And you want what God has for you, but you have your own personal protection up. You got your own wall up. And this isn't just women, this is men too. We, 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 we put up walls that nobody can break through. So, so let me say this, good God Almighty, that was some men that they, when they married again, they married someone that could not challenge them because they didn't want to be broken again. So they married someone that couldn't challenge them and they settled because the person looked like if they walk away, they ain't gonna matter no way. And now you're miserable because you didn't marry the person that you were supposed to. Why? Because you were still hurting and broken. Because you really can't be loved. Because I don't want it. I don't want to hurt no more. I got to go here. Y'all all right? I got to go here. See, one of the comments that I hear from a lot of people is, is in, in its concerning church is I don't want a fellowship. I don't want to come to church because I don't like foolishness. Yeah, right? Right? How many, by show of hands, how many of you hear that? How many, you know, I don't want, I don't want. You hear that? You know, the thing about that is it reveals, it reveals trauma. Because in most cases, people that say that, something happened to them that caused them to begin to block out even the Lord. So they pointed at the people and said, I don't want to be a part of the people. But at the same time, they blocked out God. So in it, they can't receive what God wants to receive or wants to give them because they can't take it. The last time I opened myself up to people, they talked about me. They criticized me. The last time I served in the church, the, the pastor I heard that they was talking about me over dinner. The last time I served, they did this to my child. The last time I served and you were hurt and you were broke. And I want to tell you, it's time to tear down the walls that you protect yourself by and walk in the newness of God because God is saying, now come in. See, I don't do foolishness. I serve for many ministries, many years in ministry, and this is, this is the thing. You have to decide whether you're going to be a virus or organism. We become so accustomed to receiving a word that we don't realize that we act like viruses sometimes. Because viruses are selfish. Viruses operate only, see, we look at it as if it is an antibody that comes inside the body and is disrupt because it's not a part of the whole system. 
And he's saying that we can't operate like that no more. He says, now you have to begin to be an organism again. In other words, when you begin to say that they're not going to be able to love and you begin to find questions and you can always find something wrong, you're operating like a virus and not an organism. Where we're going that we need you to operate like an organism. Come on, one body, one mind, come on, one spirit. One, it could be that we think, in some cases, not all, but it could be, in some cases, you might think that you're higher than you think you are. It just may be that you may think that you were a little higher than you are. I find, Bishop, that it's easy for people to judge from low places. Because you're looking at what's above you. If you want to elevate, first thing you got to do is you got to come down. Y'all all right in here? It could be likely, but I really believe that a lot of us have become antisocial. And we're like that because we built our own isolation because we don't want people around us. Because when people get around us, it reveals our true nature. And some of us really don't want people to know how much we really go through. Can you ask your neighbor, can you be loved? Can you? I know you can be churched, but can you be loved? I know you can shout, but can you be? Something about a person that gives themselves the ability to be loved, they can find humility. There's no ego in love. tell somebody something when we get to heaven he's not going to ask what title were you on earth when I get before him amen because now I, I, now there were 12 apostles and actually one of them messed up so there was 11 apostles the other one came in Barnabas Paul after him but I really believe that when we get before the Lord he's not going to say apostle Fred good no he's going to say Fred And some of us are going to miss this next place in God because we're gonna we're gonna regulate it or we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna look at who we are and who you are in this time is irrelevant when he's taking you to the Mount of Transfiguration. It's getting thick. It's getting thick. problem with the type of personality that isolates themselves is some of these people don't feel like they're getting the attention they need they they think they're supposed to get so if you and I don't give them the attention they feel they may need to move on because they don't get the attention Some people think that they have to be in the close confines of a person in ministry. And if I'm in the close confines, I'll join the church. And where you're going at, you don't need to be in the close confines with me. You just need to allow yourself to hear me as God flows through me. And then after that, let's grow together. See, because where God is taking the church... You won't have close community all the time, but you have to trust in what God has given you and who you are. You think of yourself more higher than you ought to. 
you feel slighted when nobody pays attention to you or you feel slighted when the right person doesn't pay attention to you she walked right past me and she didn't say anything he looked right at me but he didn't even speak it's easy to find something wrong with somebody that's working when you ain't doing nothing. Because if I'm working, it means that you're standing still watching me. But if both of us are working, y'all should have shot it right there. If both of us are working, See, you got to realize that you come in the company, hey man, that you're with a man that I'm going to take up the chairs too. You got to realize you're with a builder. Uh, the Bible calls Paul a master builder. I regulate myself to a master builder. I just don't preach. I can build. I can teach. But I'm going to work and I'm going to keep working. But if I don't pay attention to you, I guarantee you, I see you if you're working with, if you're working with me. Because if you're working with me, I'm going to say, pass me the hammer. Pass me the saw. Pass me the broom. Let's pick up the chairs. Come on, let's move and do something. But you got to be working with me. This still all has to do with your ability to be loved. Because you feel something deficient you don't get certain things certain touches I'm almost finished you feel slighted I have a next question for my super spiritual people somebody say Bible can you love past what you've discerned you love past what you've discerned somebody she's telling the truth already I've had and I always use myself in the example because God does that when you can humble yourself and hear God he'll do that so, so I have some things to happen that was in my past I, I came in contact with some leaders uh, uh, a bishop and, 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 and I particularly did not like them And I didn't like them because of what I discerned. Discernment is a spiritual gift. So it wasn't that I had anything factual that I saw. I discerned it. I picked it up, baby, in the... And the problem with a lot of people is that everything you pick up in the spirit you don't know what to do with because everything you pick up in the spirit shouldn't be judged some things are prayed for and what we do first is because watch this we're celebrating discerning something we're celebrating the unction and the gift and being shown something. So because we feel like we've been shown something, we feel like we ought to judge what we've been shown. But can I tell you, that is what novices do. And tenure and time in the church does not mean that you're a novice or that you watch this or you're maturing spirit because there are a lot of people that have a lot of word but you don't have no maturity in spirit maturity in spirit is not god bless you uh, god god bless you how you doing today blessed and highly favored that is not maturity i'm thankful to god be the glory 
Jesus ain't going to meet you after you talk to them. So what I've done, because I discerned it, I begin to judge it. And the Holy Ghost rebuked me because he says, I need you to love and fellowship with them. Don't act like you ain't never said no to God. Let me take that back. Don't act like you ain't never wrestled with it. I wrestled because I didn't want to fellowship with them. I didn't want to love them. But he says, I got something that I need you to do. I need you to do this. Now today, I'm still not in fellowship, but I did what God wanted me to do because he had something for me to do. And I learned, watch this, he says, I don't want you to love them for them, I want them to love them for you. Y'all ain't catch it. There's another level of love good that I need you to go to. So I need you to be able to love your enemies and pray for them that despitefully use you. We can say that. We can rehearse that. It comes out of our mouth. It flows off our lips. But when we are challenged with it, it's not easy. And it ain't easy to love somebody that I know is against me. I know those Negroes was hollering my name wrong. I know they was talking about me. He said, no, but I need you to love them past this. Watch this, hold up, hold up. I need you to be able to love them past this because I have an assignment for you that you've yet not to come in contact with. He was preparing me for Charlotte. Y'all don't understand. He prepares you. Because had not I obeyed God, I wouldn't have been ready for my own transformation. So we have a lot of so-called spiritual people that are novices. Because you discern something, but you can't handle what you see. The next time God lets you discern something, especially if you discern it about me, if I've already discerned it about me. Because that's what we do. Pray for me first. And see what he says. Can I say this? Can I challenge you with this? Nine times out of ten, if you discern something and immediately a judgment comes, it's not God. Y'all want to go a little deeper with that? Before any judgment, there's court. And in court, there's evidence that's presented before you make a judgment. In other words, if you discern something about somebody, go to the courts of heaven first and Get the evidence and hear the case out before you make the judgment. Because had they known that seeing Paul when he was a murderer and killing people and judged him right off the bat, where would the Holy Church be today? Y'all in here? These red alerts that go off in the spirit that you have no control of, I need to tell you that that is not God. Can I show you why? 1 Corinthians 14 and 32. 1 Corinthians 14 and 32. Got that up there for me? And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Come on. For God... It's not, say that all together, the. How can 
Can you get a red alert in the spirit about me in the midst of the congregation of the righteous and say that it's God? When he has given me the spirit and the platform at the time, everything in here is subject unto me, but you're getting a word about me? If we believe the word, then we're saying that the word is not true. Can you be loved past your own spiritual discernment? And can your spiritual discernment be sharpened? If it can, begin to clap your hands in this house. One of the biggest things that we ought to offer as believers is redemption and restoration. Because this is the thing. We as a church, as a people, as individuals, ought to be known for the love. He says we know them by their... We know them by the love that they have for their brethren. We have to be known for the love. And your love will be your fruit. Galatians 6 and 1, let me try to close this saying, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in the fault, ye which are spiritual, ye which are what? Spiritual. You that are what? Spiritual. He says, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. It is true that the Lord has gifted us to discern evil, but he has also gifted us with the heart to love those that are in need of restoration. So a person may be in a bad state, but can you love them while they're in a bad state? Most time it's because we had not come out of the state we're in yet. You may be gifted, but you have to cherish uh, 1 Corinthians 13 and 2. It says, and though we have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though we have all faith so that we can move mountains and have not charity, he says, we ain't nothing. The thing about receiving a new heart is in the natural, you have to be someone that is compatible. Are you compatible for a new heart? That's the question. Are you ready? I dare you to say I'm ready for where we're going. I'm ready. I'm... Oh, you got to say it better than that. Come on, you got to say it better than that. <laughs> One of the spiritual necessities for a new heart is a new spirit. And it's our ability to be able to forgive. Could you get for me, DJ, could you get for me, K, uh, uh, Titus uh, 115. Titus 115. One of the spiritual necessities of a new heart and a new spirit is our ability to be able to what? Forgive. Because you can't fully love me if you ain't forgiving yourself, I'll say it again. You can't fully forgive me if you have not forgiven yourself. The scripture says, unto the pure, all things are what? Pure. But to them that are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their mind and their conscience is defiled. Leave that up there. When people are broken and hurt, it destroys the purity of who they are. And even when they make the attempt to love somebody, they can't because of the brokenness and the unforgiveness. So they are not pure of heart. And because they have not a pure heart, 
everything is defiled. So when you come to them and you talk to them about a relationship, you know what they say? It ain't going to work out. When you talk to them about something positive that you want to do, it's not going to work out. When you talk to them about the church and what God is putting in your heart, they're going to say, all they're going to do is use you. All they're going to do, they ain't going to do right. Why? Because they have not a pure heart because they have been broken. Scripture says, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. Because of someone that molested them while they was at church, nothing is pure. You have to make a decision. You have to forgive. When we hear soul tie, we think sexual. blood exchange and that's right but soul tie goes further than just blood exchange I'm almost finished intercourse is more than sexual exchange of fluids it is also connection when I came in contact with Bishop Carswell we made watch this we came into connection we came into fellowship. Now that when he comes in contact with me, if something is wrong with me because we have a connection, he can feel my infirmity. Now we have a spiritual agreement and relationship. You have made communion. You have made, you have exchanged thoughts and feelings. And the reason some of you can't forgive is because you've been hurt and you have soul ties with the people that have hurt you. You have soul ties with the people that you have given your heart to. That's what we were taught. Everything was sexual. The thing about it is, it is an exchange. So yeah, me and my wife had a conversation. We have so many stimulating conversations. But the Holy Ghost had quickened her and she revealed something to me that was broken in the inside of me. And I could do nothing. <sighs> and it was quick. Deliverance came quick. <sighs> well, hold up. It's because I accepted what she said as truth. She revealed to me this broke you. And because this broke you, you don't trust people like this. And I could do nothing but cry because I seen my walls. And I saw that some of my cleaving was I got to protect us because I saw what happens and I'm not going to let it happen again and some of what you're doing is protection but the root of it is bitter some of it is protection but the root of it is bitter and the root has no life in it so there's no life can come to you because even what I'm doing I'm doing it from the wrong root it's not connected to the waters he said out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water but when the bitterness watch this when the root is more about what I've been broken by it is not living waters and there's some of you right now that there's a flow that's coming out of you but it is not a flow of living water it's a flow of bitterness it's a flow of brokenness You got to break that soul tie today. You got to forgive them today because they're taking space in you. The reason we call plumbers out to our homes 
is we run into a problem that we can't fix ourselves. And I want to tell you that you have a problem that you need the Holy Ghost. You clogged up, baby. And you need him to get that thing out of you so God can prepare you for where and what he would have for you to do. You have to forgive them so you can have the freedom to fly. Fact of that matter is the ability to forgive gives you the freedom to fly. It allows you to soar. Some of us have wings, but we can't fly. Can I show you a person that has wings but can't fly? They have a relationship and everything that they say come to pass. Not our segment of the message, but they're gifted people that God uses them, but they can't seem to get free. I live that. Where I fed everyone, I wasn't free. Everybody lived out of me. I wasn't free. So, so I would go in the realm, watch this, in the spirit. Because I could fly, but I couldn't soar. What's the difference? Flying takes muscle and work. Soaring, you just spread your wings and the winds of God float you. Everybody standing in here. I need you to begin to put your mind on, I don't care how far you have to go back. Recently, I have to have to go back because as a child, I was molested. Yeah, about six. I was about six years old. Come on, baby. I was molested. Older boys. Yeah. Then after that, a woman molested me. So I didn't know why I was so hateful at a certain age. And when things happen to us in our childhood and we haven't had a chance to bring it before God, what it does is it sits in us and it begins to destroy us and it gives us a mindset and a lifestyle that sometimes comes from our abuser. And even though I was never sexually challenged, I became vengeful, hurtful, and violent towards anything and anybody that got close to me. So I was always a man about my immediate family and everybody else was an enemy. And some of you got to let your abuser go. Some of you got to let your abuser go. You got to let the one go that molested you. You got to let the one go that harmed you. You got to let the one go that spiritually abused you. You got to let the one go that used you. You got to let the ex go. You got to let, you got to let them go because they've taken room up in you. I didn't realize, watch this, that I was functioning in God's kingdom with my abusers in me. So there would be certain times that I come in contact with certain people and I would have a vengefulness about me because I couldn't function in the area of freedom and love that I was broken in. Some of you are wondering why you can't function. Well, I can't be loved like this to this level. And it's because in that area, you've been wounded. In that area, you've been broken. And you have to forgive them 
so that you can go to your next level of freedom. Because I want to tell you, it wasn't supposed to happen to you. It wasn't supposed to happen to me. And I even had to minister to my mother one time because she cried like a baby. She said, I didn't know. And I was a grown man when she found out. I say, no, mama, it wasn't your fault. That's what the devil does. The devil always looks to destroy us when our the ones that are protecting us are not there. But I want somebody to know today you got to let them go. Today they have to leave out of your spirit. Today they have to leave out of your soul. Because let me tell you something. You can be loved. And you have the ability to love. From here you just want to look. You won't love from your abuser standpoint. Come here, baby. Psalms 51. I want to read this and then I want to pray over us. Sometimes we don't know what the scripture really points to because in certain times it means certain things. But for us today, we're asking God to shift us and give us a new heart. Give us a new freedom. We want to forgive. Psalm 51 and 10. Created me a clean heart. Oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. And restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me, Lord, with your free spirit. Can you lift your hands in here, please? Father, right now, there's so many of us that were wounded when we were children. We had people that abused us. We had people that molested us. We had people that fondled us and these people were supposed to be some of the same people that were protected us they were supposed to be family members and they took something from us God and we lost years and we lost relationships and there's some people God that they, even their marriage was not right because they were not free from their abuser there are people that weren't free God because the pastor did something and even some of the people that in the ministry, they did things, they used their cloak for, for a cloak of maliciousness, God, and they destroyed some of the children of the harvest, Lord. We lift them up right now, God, the ones that are in the sanctuary, even the ones, God, that right now, God, that see us internationally, the ones that see us on social media, we lift them up right now in that place where they are, in their living rooms, in their cars, God, in their place of worship, Lord, we lift them up. And we pray right now, Lord, your Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit that is omnipresence, that's able to be in all places at one time. I pray, Father, that you will begin to right now through your spirit, God, to embrace them. Give them freedom, God. Let their hearts begin to feel the fiery of your embrace. Let their hearts begin to feel the fire of your presence, God. Let their heart, God, begin to feel, God, the freedom, God, and give them the courage to be able, God, to forgive so that they can live in this new place. And God, for everything that you're going to do in them right now, for everybody that's getting free right now, for that minister that's getting free, for that elder that's getting free, for that pastor that's getting free, that bishop that's getting free, that apostle that is getting free, for that woman, that woman, that son, that daughter that's getting free, for everyone that is getting free right now, God, we thank you. And we bless you right now, God, for your grace and your mercy that kept us even here to receive it. We thank you right now for it. And we bless you right now, God, for new, new dimensions, new realms of the Spirit that be, will be revealed to us as our soul is freed up to do your work and your will. In Jesus' name, amen.
God for the word that was given to us from the apostle. Can you be loved? The question is yes. But do you believe that? We say it all the time that people receive the type of love that they feel they deserve. So if you're with someone or you're in something and you feel like that's what you deserve, if you don't feel like God's love, I suggest you think again. Despite what happened and who did it and where you are, you can have healthy. What about that? I'm going to say it again. You can have healthy love. So to answer the question, say, point to yourself, yes. I can be loved healthy. There's nothing wrong with smiling. There's nothing wrong with getting together with some friends and somebody can touch you without you feeling violation. Someone can love you. Someone can lay next to you. You don't have to worry about if you're going to be violated or not. But you got to be careful. You can't let everybody in your space. That's what discernment has to say yes, no. Sometimes you can want love so much until you don't care what it looked like. That's dangerous. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes you can want love so bad until you don't care what it looked like. That's called feeling. You want to feel good. But real love is patient. Real love is kind. Real love is long-suffering. That's why we say study as fruits of the Spirit. Real love keeps no record of wrong. Real love, it shuns itself from evil. Listen, we're living in a day and a time. Max, y'all, really question. Is love in your house? Is love in the White House? Ooh. Is love in your house? Take a moment before we go. Close your eyes. And think about people that you are in love with or once loved you. Some mothers failed you. Ah! Some fathers did you dirty. And some of the stab wounds in your back is that of a sibling. Yeah! Come on. Oh, leave them right there on the floor. We like services like this. Are you sitting in your car saying, I don't even want to go in the house because of the man or the woman that I married? Yeah. Are you consistently being cheated over, over and over and over and over again? See, real love don't say it's sorry. Real love is really changed behavior. Because if I love you, I don't want you to look like that. Some of your tears is because of somebody you didn't fell in love with. Oh, forgive and live. Forgive and live. All over this building, y'all just need to give out tissue. I had to forgive my own father. I did. Some of you just need to go ahead and forgive. You holding it back. You are holding back the greatest life that you can have. Because bitterness is the blocker. It's okay to cry. Bitterness is your blocker. See, that's what happens when you give the person that you, you were violated from, you give, them the, you give them the power when you don't say, look, I forgive you. They hold you captive. Y'all sit down. Thank God for the word that was given. Husband, as we get ready to lift our offering, I'm going to say something to my husband. Y'all just going to have to be witness to it. I thank you for your courage. I love you. It takes courage to stand up 
and expose that. A lot of people are in, they're bound up because they don't even have the courage to talk about what happened. A lot of people can't get free because they're holding on to stuff that they're ashamed of. And so that took courage. So I applaud you, honey. You are so beautiful to me. I make a vow in front of everyone that, honey, I am going to love you beyond your pain, past your pain. In fact, I'm woman enough to take it. Give it to me. Give it to me. See, real love does that. Give it to me. Give it to me. Real lovers say, what they did? No, nah, give it to me. Let me fix it. Let me fix it. And so I'm a, uh, trust me, give it him. Give it him. And some of y'all just need to say, look, what happened to you when you was a child? Give it him. You ain't having Christmas. How many trees we gonna have in the house this year? Four, five, or six? What you want? See, real love does that. Real love wants you to have better than what you had. I love you. You in the church where you love. Liberty, love, and laughter. This is unity. We love here. I want people better. Hear me. We get ready to lift our offering. Now listen. Unity Church, bring me that, is a church of liberty, love, and laughter. Online, we get ready to lift our offering. This is the church of liberty, love, and laughter. My husband and I, we want you guys to know something. We're getting ready to get out of this building. Yeah. We're going somewhere, and we need you guys to understand that we're not doing this by ourselves. My husband and I, this is our offering. This offering is $1,000 for my husband and I. I'm challenging those on Facebook because a lot of people don't understand that we have a lot of celebrities that do watch this church and watch Car Chronicles Movement. I'll challenge you for $1,000 and I'm doing this because we got to move out of this building. And so understand the church that God has given us is going to be a church like you've never seen before. It's going to be different. Unity Church is a church of liberty, love, and laughter. It's going to be a church for the community. We're going to say, where's Shane? Is Shane here today? Shane is not here today. Shane is fixing an individual's credit. We don't want a church that's struggling. We want you guys to understand the difference between struggling and living paycheck to paycheck. We don't want you to do either of those. We want you to have. So we want you guys to understand that this is a church that help you. We want you to get your credit together. This young lady right here is beautiful. She is. Where's Cheryl? Is she here today? Okay. She's not here. But if you get with these young ladies, they can teach you how to budget your finances so you won't be broke. Do you understand what's getting ready to happen to this nation? We get ready to be in a position where we can have things. The Bible says here, make you a good steward over your finances. The first thing that you should do is understand seed time and harvest. And so we are the first teachers. And so those of you that can follow us today with $100, do that. I know your rent got to be paid. Do not put your rent and your mortgage anywhere near this offering. I'm going to say it again. I am. We are not those toes. Well, no, we ain't them kind of pastors. We don't want your rent and we don't want your mortgage. Your car, no. Hold on, I got to say this. Wait a minute. Let me teach y'all how to be better people. Your rent and your car note and your insurance and your mortgage is first. They're like, what's wrong with you? You're tight. Yeah, it's a tenth. I get it. And God knows what, you knew, what you're doing right now, what you need. But y'all got to realize, y'all got to use wisdom. And wisdom ain't going to, I'm not, she laughing. I'm telling you, I am not going to be a pastor to tell you, you better put your rent and your tithe in the offering and then you homeless and you ain't got nowhere to stay. And then you and me and Fred's office saying, I ain't got nowhere to stay. No, you better realize it's the first and I understand and so does God. But what we're doing is a sacrifice for our building. And so I'm, that's why we say, if you can, 
then follow up. Those celebrities, it's easy for you. I'm not going to out you. You know who you are. Please, I thank you in advance. Those that can do five, those can do 100, do the best because we getting out of here. We getting out of here. We, I'm saying we, we are getting out of here. Let me tell you something, the building that we lit that child, I'm so excited because of the parking lot. Oh, see, y'all don't really know me. She got the swipey thing right here. I'm excited because of the parking lot. Because I can have my Unity game day and we ain't got to worry about nothing and nobody. I'm not worried about it because I can have a real carousel for the children and I can have donkeys and horses and, oh, honey. I can have a, I, what? I'm really for the community. I want the community better. There's the swipey thing, there's Givelify. Now, I'm going to get honest, y'all. Unity is a church of what? I want to talk to the ladies right now. When my husband was preaching, Michelle took a scissor. And she cut this sucker off. I bond up every spank. Okay, ladies, don't leave me by myself. Stand up if you feel my pain. Stay, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. There you go, baby. Stand up if you feel my pain. I bond every spank, every girdle in the name of Jesus. It was cutting off my blood circulation. I felt my head. Oh, come on here. Y brothers, y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. Y'all take off a bra, but you won't put one on. I'm going to tell you. Huh? And welcome to Unity Church. This thing was of the devil. Michelle, hold on now. Let me tell you. Girl, wait. Y'all know how I am. We cut it from the back, right? We did. We cut it. I had to cut the straps off the thing. Look, baby, look what I did. So, Michelle, I got holes in it. Ladies, let me tell you something. If you live in a life of celibacy, wear one of these things. By the time you think about getting this off, they're going to change their mind. He's going to leave. You to these shenanigans, we laugh here. Oh, she got her camera up. You can go live. I don't care. I preach with a bonnet. Let me tell you, I cut this sucker off. If you trying to live a life of celibacy, it's like a harness. It, what's them things called? Chastity belt. It's a chastity belt. You will forget it. You'll be like, you want that mind. But if you want to look good, you got to wear it. Let me tell you something. At our new location, we're going to give classes on how to wear garments. I'm tired of seeing. I'm, I'm serious. You know, I, hey, Missy back in line. Oh, this church going to be grand. I mean, it ain't going to be on I me. Mean, it's going to I'm going to have classes on how to wear bras and underwears. And, and you're going to, the bond is coming off. Them wrestling suits y'all wearing, those whole wrestling suits look like you in WWE. I'ma have a whole service and I'm just gonna lay them all at the altar and we gonna get free. I'm not playing, I want ladies. They wanna get married, so I'm just trying to help y'all get what, y'all stand up. I'ma teach y'all how to put on makeup. Oh, we gonna have makeup to tear, I'm bringing my glam squad. What? Are you playing the exorcist in the church? It sound like you playing, Trey, it sound like you playing that the devil is alive. We got candy for the children. Y'all listen here, stand up here. Y'all laughing. Well, this is the church that will make you laugh. Because in my mind, I'm a comedian. The Bible says a merry heart is good like medicine. And so I give you a daily dose of medicine because most of you are home crying anyway. Listen, I love y'all. My husband and I love y'all. I want my community better. Listen, vote. 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 
Hold on. Now I can go deep and I can talk about the key states. I can talk about all that stuff. But North Carolina, they're here today. Y'all better do it. Y'all have to vote. I, I, I'm, I will ne- I'm, they, they warned me. I got a, a disturbing call from Facebook because what happens with me doesn't happen to a lot of people. And they asked me what did I say specifically because I'm not allowed to speak certain things. But I am going to say this. I would not vote for anybody that hates my people. If I see a certain flag with a Confederate flag, what, what are you going to do for me in my community? I'm going to say that. I have a problem with people who look like myself that understand the correct Confederated flag and still vote for individuals that agree with a flag that keeps my people bound. Now, that's my take. Now, I can go deep. I'm not a silly. I mean, I can be silly, but I'm very educated. I understand the tax break, but he get a tax break, but yet and still we breaking our backs. I mean, that ain't right. You get to go home for COVID, but yet and still we get to bury the people in our community. That ain't right. So I'm saying we need North Carolina's vote. Oh, y'all don't understand the red state, the key states. Do we need a lesson? We can change it. The Bible speaks about the African Americans. The Bible speaks about us. We're called the Cushites. The Bible says that Pharaoh said, there is no way for us to kill these babies because they have them too fast. The Israelites, that's us. They're having them too fast. He said, I want you to kill the firstborn. The midwife said, we cannot kill them because they shoot these babies out so fast. By the time the midwives get them, they don't already have three or four. They said, this is biblical, if they understand their numbers, and we have the numbers to change the White House, but we need y'all to vote. I am saying, get out and vote and change this because where strife is, every evil work follows, and we are a product of strife in that house that has now affected everybody's house. I need y'all to vote. Remember, we are not coming here on Wednesday. Let us leave. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for we are going out, and some of us have already cast our ballots. But some are going to the polls on Tuesday. It's Tuesday, right, guys? I am asking that your protecting power be at the polls. We have heard We have witnessed rhetoric and racism. We don't like it. But God, we have the power to change things in a vote. God, right now, we as a community of African American people, God, I must say it, we are tired. We do understand that change can be given. Let us understand the power of a vote. Let us realize that the spirit of unity, God, is now predicated in the kingdom, but in the earth, it seems like it's divided. God, we need, Lord God, a change, God. We need people to wake up and stand in the rain and flood the poles, God, that we can change this situation, God. The changing of the gods has begun. Right now, God, give us new Don't let someone come into office, God, and give us a whole lot of promises. We don't need promises anymore. We need action. We need the action of change because we need to recover and, God, make this situation of COVID. Get to the place, God, where the world can operate. Maybe not as normal, but as the new normal. We need jobs, God. We need health care. God, we need people, Lord God, that can come in and raise up the community. We need God a change in the police system. We need God a change, God, all over the nation, God. Let the world open up. And God, with this new change, God, let it bring about a real change. We can't take another four years of this. We can't. We cannot take another four years of this. God, right now, when we leave this place and we go to the polls, Stand in agreement that, God, we are standing for change. God, we know that you can do all things. 
keep us safe. Keep us safe when we are faced with racism and bigotry. Keep us faced, God, and keep us, Lord God, whole as we're faced with people who don't like us because of the colors of our skin. Keep us safe, God, that as we go and we vote, that, God, these rumors, these conspiracy theories, that when we go to the polls, there'll be people trying to sway us. Let us be bold and realize that our civil rights is to exercise our right to vote. And, God, let us realize the strength in our numbers. Let's show them that the African-Americans' numbers, we really are a force to be reckoned with. We thank you, God. We bless your name. Until we come back on Sunday, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Vote, guys. North Carolina. Hey, y'all know this song, right? We praying for the Allen family. Y'all know this song, right? God bless you. See y'all Sunday. <laughs>